Hi there, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We are staying for four nights at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we want to show you everything it has to offer for in 2024 and beyond. We're super excited today, and uh, we hope you to stick around for the whole video. So uh, enjoy this hotel review and tour on today's episode of James, James and Paul, Paul Try It All. Originally opened in 1966, Caesars Palace remains to this very day one of the most iconic Las Vegas resort destinations. Featured in numerous films such as Rain Man, Ocean's Eleven, and The Hangover, when you think of Vegas, you think of Caesars Palace. More libations, my imperial conquerors? What? More booze. Oh, yeah. Two more of these, please. Located in the center of the strip between the Bellagio and the soon-to-be Hard Rock Hotel, Caesars Palace is easily at the heart of Las Vegas action. Caesars Palace is made of six towers with 3,960 rooms and suites, and they also have a convention facility of over 300,000 square feet. This would be our first time staying at Caesars Palace together, and we were very excited to check out this historic hotel and casino. Well, hello there. Let's get this room tour underway. Come on in. All right, guys, so we are in a Caesars Palace Augustus Premium Room, uh, which admittedly was a slight upgrade for what we booked. We originally booked a Palace Premium Room, but I think probably because of A, just availability, and B, our diamond stash, they gave us a little bit of an upgrade. Let's start with my favorite part of any hotel, and that's gonna be the bathroom. And Caesars Palace has some nice ones, so follow me. Immediately, you can see that there's a lovely double vanity, which will be perfect for both me and my husband as we get ready for our nights out on the strip. Uh, I am very grateful that we don't have to fight over countertop space, because that's a pain in the butt. Now, immediately to the right of this double vanity, we have the best part of the bathroom, I can't even lie. We have a deep soaking tub here with whirlpool jets. I cannot wait to sit in this tonight and just unwind and relax and get all bubbly and noodly. Should be a lot of fun. Next to the giant whirlpool tub, we have a big walk-in shower that can easily fit two, maybe three if you're skinny and you're into that. Uh, but uh, this will definitely serve our purposes. I mean, this is nicer than our shower at home, I can't lie. Right behind you here, we've got, of course, this is our standard uh, toilet uh, water closet, whatever you want to call it here. Nothing fancy about the toilet, no, no fancy bidet or anything, but it will, of course, get the job done. Now let's check out the rest of the room. Immediately upon exiting, we've got a big, beautiful, full-length mirror for checking yourself out and primping and getting ready for the night out, uh, which again, I know is important to a lot of you as it is to me. To my uh, left, not my right, to my left, we've got a nice little closet for storing your clothes that you might want to hang up. If you're like us and you travel with things like jackets and suits and nice shirts, this definitely comes in handy. I know a lot of people do just live out of the suitcase when they're traveling, but we've kind of got, we've got, gone through the practice of well, whenever we do travel anywhere, we make a point to unpack before we do anything else. Now, as you can see here, this hotel room is big. I have had apartments that I don't think were this big. Uh, so I think it's 600 feet square foot hotel room, which is a lot of space for a hotel room on the Las Vegas Strip. And we're really excited to be here for four nights. Well, over here, we've got a nice little desk for doing some work, maybe editing video, you know, what have you. Immediately to the right, we've got the nice little wet bar TV area with plethora of storage. We've got these cute little cabinets up here. I'm not gonna open that one because I don't wanna knock anything on the little mini bar and suddenly be charged for it, but you get the idea. And then, of course, we have the dreaded mini bar. We shall not be touching this because we don't want to pay the unbelievably high prices for nuts. Now, beyond this small selection here of $18 waters and uh, romance kits and looks like charging uh, cords and whatnot, there's another little, not even little, there's another ginormous mini bar right in here with an assortment of beer, water, sparkling water, little nips of booze here. I mean, really, there's, there's a lot to actually choose from. So 
if you if it's in your budget and you don't mind paying the any bar prices, you've got a plethora to uh, to choose from here at Caesar's Palace. But that's going to be re remaining closed for all of our trip because, frankly, I'd rather not pay those prices. Now we also have a nice little storage area underneath here with big drawers to store your belongings. Comes in very handy. And moving on, we've got a cute little table here if you want to bring some food back to your room, sit with your spouse or partner, and you know, just enjoy a nice little dinner here, or even just lay out your stuff. We have a gorgeous little sitting area with this cute little L-shaped couch, an ottoman, nice little chair. Sit back, relax, watch a little TV after a long day. That is a comfy couch. Oh my, I want a couch like this. Go oh, you Caesar's Palace, I'm impressed. Now, one of the most important parts about any hotel stay is gonna of course be the bed and its comfortability. Now this, just by sure looking at it, and a little, and I can't lie, a little fondling of it already, it seems like a pretty comfortable bed, but for me, there's something I always love to do whenever I'm in a hotel room, and that's this. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's, that's like sleeping on a big fluffy marshmallow. Uh, is this the best possible way? I think I'm going to be snoozing easily tonight. Uh, but no time for that yet. The best part about this room is yet to come. So follow me right this way. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this was an upgrade for us. We originally paid for a Palace premium room, but they gave us a little bit of an upgrade to an Augustus Tower premium room. And with that came a gorgeous view. So right out this window, as you can see, we have pretty much a view of the Bellagio fountains that cannot be beat from Caesar's Palace anyway. Of course, you can also see the Eiffel Tower at the Paris Hotel, uh, and just a, a nice little view of the strip going south. Uh, I cannot wait to see what this looks like at night because this is very impressive. We are on the 35th floor. I feel like I could see, you know, as far, you know, as uh, far out as I possibly can. It's just so much to look at. So I'm really excited to see how it all looks up, lit up at night. And we'll share a little bit of that later. Now, that being said, that's our room. And we've really enjoyed sharing this with you. Uh, we definitely encourage, at least based off what we've experienced so far, if you decide to stay at Caesar's Palace, you might want to consider the Augustus Premium Room. After checking out our room, it was time to go venture out into the massive casino at Caesar's Palace. Now this casino is large. There is so much here. They have all of your favorite games. They have your Dragon Links, your Lightning Links. They have your Huff and More Puff, anything that you want to play. Another notable thing about their casino is the tables. Caesar's Palace has always had a lot of table games at very high minimums. One thing to keep in mind is that you will not find a table for anything less than $25 a hand or even sometimes $50 a hand. They offer many games such as Blackjack, Craps, Roulette, and Pai Gao, and Baccarat, all at extremely high minimums. Now, because we can't go to Caesar's Palace without feeling like a Caesar, we decided to step into their high limit room and try our first ever high limit slots. We are going to play some high limit slots in the high limit room. We have this double top dollar here. And we are gonna play $10 to spin. Let's see what we can do. Okay, well, there's the top dollar. Wow. And now that we've seen it, we know it exists. And this hurts. I can't lie, this hurts. This hurts to watch. Oh, oh my God. I'm regretting this. Paul, why are we doing this? I'm faint. <laughs> I'm feeling faint, Paul. I think I'm gonna pass out. Just watch, Hand Pay City. All right, last, last one. Please get a top doll. And no, we didn't. We did not get it's the- It's right up there. Yeah. All right, well, uh, this is why we don't play high limits normally. I, I don't know how these influencers do $25 a spin. That's, this is crazy. But yeah. we did it. And you know what? It is our first time ever doing it in Vegas. That <laughs> was just painful. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go curl up in our, our bathtub in our hotel room and cry. 
For all you sports fans out there, Caesars has got you covered too. Featuring a larger than life sports book with a full bar and plush reclining chairs, not to mention a plethora of screens to watch games on, it's hard to beat. I think the, the sports book really comes Wow. In. Sportsbook chairs are really comfy. With a cute little table? There's a little table too. And I don't like sports. Maybe I should. <laughs> After making our way through the casino, we decided that it was time to look at the different dining options that Caesars Palace offers. Caesars Palace offers numerous dining options. One of the more casual options is Beijing Noodle No. 9, specializing in Chinese noodle dishes. However, the pinnacle of any trip to Caesars Palace involves eating at the Bacchanal Buffet. This is the most iconic buffet in all of Las Vegas, and we are excited to check it out. We just finished our first night of our four nights day here at Caesars Palace, and we're ready to start our first full day here. And uh, what better way to start than a beautiful brunch at the Bacchanal Buffet. We've got some mussels here with white wine, garlic, and herbs. Let's get some of these king crab legs here. Oh, yes. well, those are good. Well, yeah, they're king crab legs. I think that's a nice little seafood starter. Lobster, borsen, and egg bites. Let's go chow down some seafood. We're gonna start off with some of these breakfast sliders. Bacon is a part of brunch. Let's get a little lobster mac and cheese there. We could do the braised short rib Benny. Braised short rib Benny, yes. That right. is a must do. It's a prime rib, please. Anything else for you, my man? You want to do some brisket? Yeah, let's do some brisket. A little bit of brisket would be lovely as well. I love that there's quesadilla tacos on the buffet here. That's so good. One of my favorite things. Yes, thank you so much. I'm gonna try this brie and apple pizza because I love brie, I love apples. Yeah, I can't have brunch without some avocado toast. We're millennials after all. We gotta get some Korean fried chicken. A couple of little pieces of that there. I think so much of the Bacchanal is just absolutely worth trying. It's, it's so hard to try it all. But that's the name of this channel. All your favorites. We've got carved duck. We got the cute little frog butt. All right, I think that is a good little assortment. Now I am completely gonna be honest here. I am so full right now that I am ready to forego dessert. So we said we weren't gonna do dessert, but honestly I have room for one more bite. I need to stop. So it's gonna be like that scene in Monty Python and the Meaning of Life. If you know, you know. I'm done. Uh, so that was the Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars Palace. We did manage to actually uh, wrap it up before our 90 minute time limit. Additionally, Caesars Palace offers other fantastic options such as Hell's Kitchen, the Gordon Ramsay Pub and Grill, and the recently opened and newly transplanted from Brooklyn, New York, Peter Luger Steakhouse. For a more casual concept, they also feature Pronto by Giada, a casual wine bar. And if upscale Chinese is more your thing, they offer the absolutely notable Mr. Chow. Originally opened in London in the 1970s, Mr. Chow quickly expanded to Beverly Hills and Manhattan shortly thereafter. That being said, we're incredibly anxious to finally be experiencing this world famous upscale Chinese restaurant and can't wait to take you along with us. We've got this squid ink rice noodles. Um, they serve it with a house-made chili sauce. So let's go in for a bite. I love squid ink, but I'm gonna try it so hard not to spill it on myself because it's just gonna stain anything it touches. Wow, that is exceptional. Savory, a lot of umami. The chili adds a nice little kick to it. So next up, they brought out our soup dumplings. So let's go ahead and give them a try. The pork flavor comes through perfectly. It's nicely seasoned. You also get the little bit of the soup flavor that just comes right through in these dumplings. Our entrees have arrived. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Ma Bignon. Cooked beautifully, medium rare. Let's give it a shot. It's in this beautiful sauce. It's wonderful. I can't even I can't even think of words to describe this. We've also got some few sides here. We've got the sauteed bok choy. Still crisp, but also soft, tender. 
it's it's really relying on the natural flavor of the bok choy. It's not heavily seasoned, but it still tastes just delicious. For our second entree, we went with the Gambler's Duck. It does come with a Chinese pancake, as well as scallions and cucumbers, and a plum sauce. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. That is amazing. The Chinese pancake gives it a nice vehicle to hold in the scallions, the cucumbers. The duck is perfectly cooked, and that plum sauce just evens everything out. We have the brown rice with mushrooms. Let's give it, see how this tastes. The mushrooms add a wonderful earthy umami flavor. The rice is chewy, but not undercooked. Just perfect, definitely a solid choice. I'm very sad that I'm getting fuller by the moment because I want to eat everything in front of us. But that being said, I'm going to enjoy every last bite until I can't anymore. We just wrapped up our dinner at Mr. Chow at Caesar's Palace. And I have to say the entire meal was a delight. Everything was truly superb. If you ever find yourself in the area, especially staying here at Caesars Palace, we highly encourage adding Mr. Chow to your list of dinner reservations. While it may be a bit of a high price point, we do feel that it is absolutely worth it for that experience as the restaurant and food is a work of art. Now, if you're looking for a more affordable option at Caesars Palace, they have you covered with the Forum Food Hall. They offer Defara Pizza, as well as Bobby's Burgers by Bobby Flay. They have amazing brunch burgers there. The Halal Guys. There's also Tiger Walk and Ramen, as well as Guy Fieri's Concept Chicken Guy. You can never go wrong with Guy Fieri. All in all, the Forum Food Hall is a great place for getting a nice quick bite in. Now, if you want to get a drink not far from the action, they also offer the Stadia Bar right by the casino floor. Now, if you really want to splurge some money on some really amazing Japanese food, right next to the Nobu Hotel is the Nobu Restaurant. This is supposed to be some of the best sushi ever. Right across from Nobu is the Monte Cristo Cigar Bar, which is the perfect place to enjoy a nice cigar. But we were really here to go all in on Bobby Flay at his new restaurant, Brasserie B. Brasserie B is Bobby Flay's take on French cuisine. And as lovers of French food, we are ecstatic to be here tonight for their soft opening. We ordered for our first starter, the hot house-made potato chips with a creamy Roquefort sauce. Next up on our appetizers, we've got the uh, mussels with a spicy harissa sauce. Now, I freaking love mussels. It's absolutely one of my favorite uh, seafood dishes. Here, our entrees are out, and we are starting off with this amazing duck confit. Duck needs to be more of a thing in the United States. It really is an underappreciated meat, and it, so much of the rest of the world is a fan of duck, and I really wish it was more common for us. I have to just point out that I love a restaurant that doesn't put salt and pepper on the table because that means the chef is confident that it is seasoned perfectly. And uh, as I look around the dining room here, there's not a salt or pepper shaker to be seen. We've also got this beautiful Gruyere mac and cheese, a nice little charred crispy crust on top. We've got the ribeye paquan with a sweet and spicy glaze avec frites. So let's get to the steak. This is a better steak that I've had at so many steakhouses even. Absolutely worth the price. We ordered dessert here and we decided to go with the pistachio creme brulee. Now it is served here with a nice pistachio cherry biscotti. And of course, you cannot have dessert without a little bit of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> that was a, an exceptional meal. I am perfectly content. I'm gonna be going to bed dreaming of this meal tonight. Now, when touring this room, we did promise you some nighttime views of the Bellagio Fountains. And I can definitely say that the view from our room did not disappoint. If you're looking for a more vibrant atmosphere for your evening, why not check out Stanton Social Prime, or of course the world famous Omnia Nightclub. Now the next restaurant that we want to showcase in this video is Amalfi by Bobby Flay. Now Amalfi is Bobby Flay's take on cuisine from the Amalfi Coast, featuring fish flown in fresh daily. We were super ecstatic to be trying this out since it opened in 2021. So one thing that I am really impressed about with this meal is the fact that they bring out a list of the fish available that is shipped in from the Amalfi Coast. And the fish is always sold by the pound and market price. We're gonna start with some charred octopus. 
I love octopus. Our pastas have arrived and they look delicious. I'm gonna start with the squid ink fettuccine, which includes squid, shrimp, lobster, and fra diavolo sauce. So we went with the butternut squash goat cheese agnolotti. This features brown butter, date balsamico, and toasted walnuts. We're gonna begin with this chicken parmigiano. This is a beautiful, crispy looking chicken cutlet with Parmesan, marinara, mozzarella, and arugula. We are on to our fish course, which we went with the Dorad. We actually had them go ahead and debone it and fillet it for us. So they brought it out on a nice, beautiful platter. And we've got it with the spicy Calabrian chili pesto, as well as the salsa verde. Oh, Bobby Flay, you're making me even more of a food snob than I already am. Uh, we went with the triple lemon cake. Uh, I adore lemon cake, and this looks delightful. Amalfi was an experience to be had, and I am utterly pleased. Uh, definitely a must check out if it's within your budget and you're able to, uh, to make it work. I am looking forward to the time when I can come back and experience that again. If you find yourself looking for something sweet, be sure and stop by Dominique Ansel. Known for inventing the Cronut in 2013, you'll find a selection of sandwiches, desserts, and of course the famous half donut, half croissant pastry. We have just sat down at a table here near the Forum Food Hall after picking up a little snackle from Dominique Ansel. Uh, we have their Cronut of the Month, which is a dulce de leche and cinnamon Cronut. Look how tasty that looks. Super yummy. I cannot wait. I'm gonna, here, you take the first I'll bite. I'll take the first bite. Wow. Oh, look. Oh my, Atlanta. You gotta, you gotta check out the filling here mm -hmm. on this guy. Look, it's just filled with a beautiful like pastry cream. Uh, I'm excited. Oh, the pastry cream is so good. Give me another bite here. Mmm. I will tell you what's wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. That is perfect. I don't care if it's a $10 donut. We have one more thing to show you. And that is the perfect little egg sandwich. Check out this perfect little egg sandwich. It's this nice brick of, of scrambled egg. With Gruyere. With Gruyere and a little bit of some chives. That is so sexy. I'm gonna take the first bite of this since you got the Corona first. So let's let's see how this tastes. That is so delightful. It's warm, it's comforting, cheesy, eggy. It actually kind of reminds me of a quiche flavors, mm. but it's just light as a cloud. Um, and the brioche is perfect. The brioche is, is damn perfect. Uh, so yeah. There's not a thing at Dominique Ansel that we've tried that we don't love, and we highly encourage checking it out next time you're at Caesar's Palace. If you're a fan of over-the-top cocktails and exquisite small bites in an intimate setting, then our favorite real housewife, Lisa Vanderpump, has you covered with Vanderpump Cocktail Garden. This is the place to go to enjoy just a nice cocktail. Our first cocktails have arrived. Uh, I have gone with the Midnight Oil, which is Vanderpump Vodka, Espresso, Kahlua, Aztec Chocolate Bitters, and Chocolate Espresso Beans. Let's give this a sippy sip. That is divine. Immediately, the smell of chocolate is present. It's so good. I went with a Checkmate Bitch, which you. is Stoli Hot Vodka, Chacho Jalapeno, Fresh Pineapple, grapefruit liqueur, vanilla citrus syrup, Angostura bitters, and pink peppercorns. Let's go ahead and give this a try. That's a beautiful cocktail. It's nice and spicy. All right, give tradesies. 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 Ooh. Yes. You really get the coffee flavor. Yeah. The spicy pineapple. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it, it's almost like having it's like pineapple with like chamoy. Yeah. Oh, good. it's so good. Our small bites have arrived and they smell amazing. I am very excited to tuck in here 
Uh, we've got the steak skewers and the bow tacos. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I love, I love meat on a stick. Wow. Yeah. That's yummy. It just kind of melts in your mouth. Let's try one of these tasty little tacos here. Look at this cute little guy. He's so adorable. That's a flavor explosion. Mm. That is so good. So good. We have got our second round of cocktails here, and I have gone with the Pleaser Caesar. I couldn't resist that name. Uh, but the Pleaser Caesar is a Vanderpump Vodka, Ferrari Rose Champagne, Blackberry, Elderflower, Lemon, and Aquafaba. Let's give this a quick little tasty taste. Oh, oh amazing. It's really good. The action? That's really good. Uh, this is really, really good. In fact, this is dangerous. I could drink these uh, repeatedly if they weren't $21.95. That's the only thing stopping me. Uh, so I went with Puff the Magic Dragon, and that is Mezcal, Dragon Fruit, Lemon, Orange Bitters, Fire Water Bitters, Jalapeno, and Tahini. Again with the spicy cocktail, though. I love spicy cocktails. All right, tell us how it tastes. Let's take a quick taste. Wow, it's smoky. Give it a few seconds here. I it, has a nice, it. it has a nice numbing chili flavor. Look at that taste. It looks delightful. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Yeah, it starts out smoky, and then it starts getting that nice little chili yes. flavor, and you start to feel the tingle as you drink it. Yes, no, that, there's a nice spice to that. So we've just wrapped up at Vanderpump Cocktail Garden. I have to say, I was impressed. Wonderful time. We highly encourage yeah, any of you watching to check this out the next time you're uh, in Las Vegas, because uh, it is worth a stop. Now, if you find yourself with a few extra thousand burning a hole in your pocket, don't worry. The Forum Shops in Caesars Palace is there to help. With nearly every luxury brand imaginable in sight, you'll be able to live out your Vegas shopping spree dreams as you walk out with bags from Coach, Gucci, Burberry, Dolce & Gabbana, and so many more. Now, however, if these high-end designers are out of your price range, like they are for us, the forum shops do feature some more modest retailers, such as Levi's and H&M. Now, no trip to the forum shops is complete without seeing the absolutely free Atlanta show. This is a great opportunity to take a break in the air conditioning, especially during the hot summer months, to watch the cute show. Don't expect much of a plot, though. This is Showbiz Pizza, Caesar's Palace style. It's easily the most intriguing show you will ever find in a shopping mall. Now the pools were closed for the season during our visit, so we snagged a few shots of them from the patio of Mr. Chow. During the summer months, they offer numerous pools as well as swim up table games and bars. The pools here are designed to emulate the Roman baths so you can bathe like a Caesar on the Las Vegas Strip. After staying for four nights at Caesars Palace, we felt that we had a pretty good lay of the land. And all in all, I'd say it was definitely a great experience for us. Now, that being said, there is so much to cover in our final thoughts, so let's get down to it. Let's begin with the room. All in all, I think we both agree that the room was comfortable, it was large, and had some great amenities, especially with the jacuzzi tub and a view of the Bellagio fountains that just couldn't be beat unless you're staying at the Bellagio itself. That view was amazing. Absolutely. It was magical to go to bed every night watching the Bellagio fountains. Uh, now, room rates at Caesars Palace can begin as low as $80 a night, usually found on Mondays and Tuesdays, and can go up to as expensive as $800 a night, depending on availability. We do recommend that you uh, register for a Caesars Rewards account if you're not already a Caesars Rewards member, as that will often uh, allow you to have discounts on your room stays. Yes, always, always, always be part of their rewards program. Absolutely. Now, that being said, uh, is that price reasonable? I'd say for some people, yes. For others, no. Uh, we, managed to actually, we managed to actually get a very good deal for our four nights. Um, and otherwise, we probably wouldn't have booked it at that time. We might have gone with a cheaper property. Uh, because again, Caesars Palace can be rather expensive. And sometimes for the age, it may not feel that it's worth it. However, if you can get a good deal or if it's in your budget, I think Caesars Palace is a great option because of its center strip location. It's right in the heart of the action. 
Uh, my only qualm as far as that would, would be that it is so far set back on the strip that I feel like getting from your room to the strip is a labor. It is a long walk, especially if escalators are broken. Right. Escalators and elevators in Las Vegas are always broken. So be prepared to add like five minutes to getting to where you need to go. Let's talk about the dining. Absolutely. I think that's probably the best part in my mind of Caesars Palace. The dining options are endless. Uh, and there's such a wide variety of different cuisines available. Uh, there is obviously some more budget-friendly options. And if you're willing to flash a little cash, there's definitely some great options for you too. I will definitely say from all of the dining that we highlighted here at Caesars Palace, we definitely have a few favorites. We also have some that we just want to come back and try. Absolutely. I would thoroughly appreciate visiting Mr. Chow again. I thought that was a wonderful experience. As we mentioned earlier in the video, it was a work of art. Uh, there was that big moving art installation in the middle of the dining room. Everything was plated perfectly. Uh, right, even right down to the the, the servers and, and their and their their manner of dress and just performance because really that's what it was. Um, Mr. Chow was definitely a great experience, as well as Brasserie B and Amalfi, both two of which we would, uh, in a heartbeat, go back to. You can never go wrong with Bacchanal as well. Oh, I love the Bacchanal. Easily my favorite buffet on the Las Vegas Strip. Some will say the win is the best, but I think Paul and I are both firmly in Camp Bacchanal. Now let's also talk about just nightlife. Uh, there's no shortage of bars on Caesars, at Caesars Palace. Um, now admittedly, we did not visit the Omnia nightclub, but let's be real, that's not really Paul nor my scene. We might do it someday just to check it off the bucket list and say we've done it. But for this trip, we chose to mostly enjoy the lounges and bars around Caesars Palace for some lovely cocktails uh, and uh, just quiet time. Another thing we want to bring up is the casinos. Yeah, yeah, the casino the casinos vast. There's a good assortment of slot machines. There's a great assortment of table games, but let's be real. Those are some pretty high minimums. Very high minimums. And I'll be transparent. We had absolutely no luck playing at Caesars Palace. Those slots were brutal to us. Absolutely awful. Um, it was a very disappointing trip as far as our gambling bankroll. And as for shopping, they have have the forum shops and you are covered there by that. Yeah, the forum shops are, are fantastic. I wish I could afford to shop more there, but I'm broke. So let's just be honest and say I don't buy anything from there. I'm also fat, so it's hard to find things there too. But it is a really nice shopping mall. And again, if it's in your budget, or if, the, if these are brands that you normally shop with, they're right there for you. It's worth a walk as well, just for those twisted escalators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is that is a fun experience. It's so just mind blowing to see a escalator that goes in a spiral. Um, but so, beyond that, I'd say it's just nice to kind of walk through and window shop. Yep, and it's your easiest way to walk out to get to Harrah's. Yeah, absolutely. Now, final thoughts on your stay at Caesars Palace. Mm, my final thoughts are, I would absolutely stay there again. It is one of my favorite resorts on the Las Vegas Strip. This will be the second time I've stayed at Caesars. And uh, I think the second time was even better than my first time. As for me, I will definitely say that I enjoyed my stay at Caesars Palace. I will be 100% honest that it is not my first choice when picking a Las Vegas hotel. And most of it is just due to the sheer amount of crowds that are, are present at Caesars Palace. This is the premier place in Vegas to be, and it attracts a, a crowd. Yeah, it, it definitely attracts a large crowd as far, and also a lot of high rollers. So again, being honest, sometimes it can feel a little bougie. And by little bougie, I mean very bougie. I, sometimes I feel poor just being in there. Uh, yeah, I, um, I definitely remember my income bracket when I'm staying at Caesars Palace. But overall, it was an amazing stay. The room was amazing. And if you have the ability or the option to book Caesars Palace, it's definitely worth a visit yeah. and a stay. I also will say the service was amazing. Every, every employee that helped us while we, we stayed there was just absolutely fantastic. So my hat off to the Caesars Palace crew for just being awesome. So overall, I will definitely rate Caesar's Palace. If I was to give it a score of 1 to 10, I would probably give it an 8 out of 10. That's pretty high for someone who doesn't want to stay there anymore. I mean, again, it might not be for me, but I also have to think objectively for our audience All as right. well. And I will give it 8 out of 10. I will also give it an 8 out of 10 because for an older property, I think it's, up, it's kept up very well. We saw people cleaning constantly. Our room was in good condition. Um, and again, this is a property that 
has been on the strip in one form or another since 1966. When you look at other older properties on the strip, some of them aren't faring as well as Caesars Palace is. And some of them really show their age. Yep, absolutely. Now that being said, folks, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure and give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon for notifications whenever a new episode of James and Paul Try It All is released. Your support means the world to us. We wouldn't be doing this without you. You guys are the star of the show, so thank you very, very much. We do really hope you've enjoyed this hotel review. And on that note, we're going to wrap things up. So only one thing left to say. Bye. So the Brahma Shrine is renowned throughout the Far East to people of all faiths. It's a place of prayer in which bestows prosperity and good fortune. That is pretty awesome. And all that incense smells really good. That is really amazing. Good.